Hello, my dear friends uh, who consider themselves Catholics under the Pope of Rome. In this video, I'm going to uh, discuss whether the Church Fathers taught that the keys uh, in, mentioned in Matthew 16, 19 were only given to St. Peter or not. Now, I've heard a lot of uh, Roman Catholic apologists argue, um, I must say, quote-unquote Catholics, because being an Eastern Orthodox Christian myself, I want to show you without a shadow of a doubt that the keys were not only given to St. Peter, but unfortunately, this is what be, what's being taught. And I'm going to go right to the, the verse here in the Bible, and I'm going to read this, and I'm going to show you the inconsistency, how this is kind of a similar way to read the scriptures as the Protestants do when it comes to faith alone. Remember when they go to Romans chapter 3 and they say, uh, Martin Luther, I believe, he added the word alone in there when it's actually not just saying faith and not by the works of the law, not faith alone. Now let us, with this in mind, let us read Matthew 16, 19. This is how a Roman Catholic apologist would conceptually read this verse. And I will give unto thee, that is Peter, he's speaking to Peter, and I will give unto thee only the keys of the kingdom of heaven. But notice there is no word only there. And nowhere else in the entire scriptures does Jesus Christ our Lord say to the apostle Peter that only to you have these keys been given. No. So the scriptures is completely silent. We have to go to the church fathers. We know and the church fathers do teach that primarily, and that's why uh, primarily the keys were given to St. Peter. And that's why we as Eastern Orthodox Christians have no problem with accepting what is called the primacy of honor. But we absolutely have a problem with accepting papal supremacy. And I'll be making um, two videos, pretty long videos, going in depth of why papal supremacy is absolutely wrong, absolutely out of line with the teachings of the church fathers we're going to go to that those are going to be this is going to be a relatively short video just talking about the keys you know sort of an introduction to uh what is coming up later i will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven that's all he says and then he defines what this is and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven so the keys are connected to the power of binding and loosening and this is not just my own interpretation of scriptures. Again, we as Orthodox, as Eastern Orthodox, we like to go back to the fathers. And also by going back to the fathers, we like to take everything in context of what they actually meant. Right? Now, there are some, uh, before we go there to the fathers and show clearly that they all taught, or that they taught that the keys were not given to the Apostle Peter alone, um, I would like to mention as a side note, because some uh, quote-unquote Catholic apologists would argue as well that there are certain unique and powerful titles that only apply to the Apostle Peter and not to other apostles. Like, for example, Prince of the Apostles, right? That's a powerful title one would think, oh, he's the prince. He's the highest. Everybody has to submit to him, right? Well, if you think that, first of all, prince, there's still a big difference between being a king. Let's say he said the king of the apostles, but that's never what he was called. But let's say you argue, well, Prince of the Apostles is still, I mean, it's a pretty very strong title. And that shows that he doesn't just have a primacy of honor. He actually has a one of, in authority. Bob, let's see what the title of the Patriarch of Alexandria used to be or is still or has been historically. Right? This is on the official website of the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Alexandria and all Africa. In terms of ecclesi ecclesiastical status regarding the Orthodox Patriarchs, the Patriarch of Alexandria and all Africa is the second in hierarchy after the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople. And yet, though, he holds the historical title. Now watch this. Let us read this together. His divine beatitude, the Pope and Patriarch of the great city of Alexandria. So already we see the title Pope being used for him, not just Patriarch. It doesn't stop there. Of Alexandria, Libya, Pentapolis, Ethiopia, all Egypt, and all Africa. Now it comes. Father of fathers. Bam! Pastor of pastors. Boom! Prelate of prelates. Annihilation. 
the 13th of the apostles and hold your breath judge of the universe i mean right there we can stop i don't even need to go any further doesn't that completely destroy all claims of paper supremacy think think about this also. so the next time you read these titles like prince of the apostles etc you cannot make the argument anymore that that means that they are the top in authority unless you want to say well now the pope of rome has to bow down to the patriarch of alexandria Obviously, that's not what it is. That's not how it has been historically understood. And even here, he's second to, you know, uh, when it comes to honor to the ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople. So obviously, that's not what it means. We see it right here. So you see, this is why you really have to, you know, study these things. I, I advise you, or all of you, you know, don't get me wrong. When it comes to the, the laity amongst you who consider yourself Roman Catholic, I really have a, a deep respect for you. And when it comes to Protestants, I will defend the teachings that we both share and that we both believe in against them, against the arrogant Protestants out there any day. But I have to say this, the moment you see these things and you harden your hearts against the true church of God, is the Eastern Orthodox Church, then, of course, there's going to be a problem. Right? Now, I don't want that. Right? And specifically, of course, this is targeted at those, the Roman quote unquote Catholic clergy who try to or like to deceive or like to take things out of context and uh, try to make a case for paper supremacy, which, like I said, I will be showing in my upcoming videos, uh, you know, that that is absolutely false. Absolutely not what the fathers thought. But let us go to um, what some of the fathers said about if indeed St. Peter was the only one to receive the keys. Let's look at, for example, Origin. Now, origin obviously is not a church father but he started off good and there were teachings that he had that were orthodox so i'm going to read him as well right? because he's usually included in in the writings of the early church even though he himself later on was anathematized that uh, i believe it was the fifth ecumenical council so let's start with him if you think that the whole church is built by god upon peter alone what would you say about john the son of thunder See, again, this title, this high and mighty title, the Son of Thunder, or each one of the apostles are the keys of the kingdom of heaven given by the Lord to Peter alone, and shall none other of the blessed men receive them? PG 13, 1000, 1001. Let's go down. Let's look at what St. Augustine said about the keys. Watch this. For the keys, not one man but the unity of the church received. Keys were given to all. Bam! PL 38, 1349. And Peter rep represented, notice there's the primacy language again, primacy of one, represented the whole church. No problem, just like the ecumenical patriarch, he can represent the church. Does he have universal jurisdiction? No. Does he have supremacy? No. He's trying to do that. He's trying to base himself on the same faulty arguments that is used by those who call themselves Roman Catholic, but it is actually not in line, as you can see, with what the fathers are teaching. Another quote from St. Augustine, Peter appears in many places of scripture because he personates the church, especially in the place where it is said, I will give to thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Again, primacy of honor. No problem. No one has a problem with that. Whether then did Peter receive the keys and Paul not? Did Peter receive them and did not John and James receive them? Peter represented the person of the church, that which was given to him alone was given to the church. So what was first here, the alone, again, this is exactly the same thing that um, when we use the arguments, certain church fathers, they use the word phrase, faith, faith alone. Remember, I made a video about this earlier. What do the Protestants do? They jump on that and say, see, yeah, the church fathers clearly taught faith alone. So that means no works. No, but you can see here also how St. Augustine uses the same concept, almost very similar. He uses alone to peter in the sense of that was what is first but out of him it was given to all of them through him to all of them that which was given to him alone was given to the church or not even through him was given to the church he says peter therefore represented the church the church is the body of christ again primacy of honor equal power nowhere does this indicate that the other apostles had less authority or less power or less of of the keys 
or didn't have the keys at all. It's not what the saints teaching. PL38802. Let's go to Saint Jerome now. He's very explicit. All receive the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and the solidity of the church is established equally upon all. PL23247. This statement totally contradicts this guy. Okay, what the, what the what Roman Catholic apologists argue? Those who claim that you know the keys were given to the apostle Peter alone. It's not the case. Saint Ambrose, what was said to Peter is said to the apostles. Saint Gaudentius of Brescia, he's not a saint in the Orthodox Church, but he's accepted, from what I know, in, in Roman Catholicism as a saint. So listen to what he says. All the apostles, when Christ rises, receive the keys as Peter. Nay, rather, they receive the keys of the kingdom of heaven with Peter when he says, receive the Holy Spirit. See how he connects the keys to the power of remission of sins? This is also interesting. So the keys is not some separate element, right? That is only for Peter and, they, and the other apostles, even though they have the, the power to remit sins, they still don't have the keys. No, this is connected together exactly like we teach in Eastern Orthodoxy. My friends who consider yourself Catholic, come home to the true, one and true, only Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church at this point. I can only remind you of this time and time again. But... It's going to be, I'm going to give you, go into much more evidence, like I said in the other videos. It's just going to be a short video here to show you about the keys. Venerable Beat, what he say? And I will give to thee the keys. The power, without doubt, is given to all the apostles to whom by him after the resurrection is said generally, receive the Holy Spirit to the bishops also and the presbyters and to the whole church. The same office is committed. Again, equality. Um. No, we don't need this mother father. We must give him. St. Ambrose. All we bishops have in Peter received the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Again, in Peter, it's just indicating primacy of honor, not any form of supremacy. Let's see if there's another quote. What? No, I think that's in regards to the keys. I leave it at that. And in my next video, like I said, I'm going to go through the entire article because this is going to be my first refutation. Uh, this is a very powerful article put together. Uh, I don't know if it's a, an Orthodox brother who put this together. I think it is. Not even, uh, but it would be irrelevant anyways because it doesn't matter who gives the information. The importance is the information itself and the arguments put forward. So please listen very carefully when I read this through in my next video. And hopefully you will see without a shadow of a doubt that the idea of papal supremacy is nothing but an invention, is nothing but an innovation. And it is, in fact, I have to say this, it may be hurtful for many, but I have to say it anyways, it is a, a monstrosity. It is, is a very high... Um, the attitude of pride basically coming through of how this uh, doctrine was created. The church for the first thousand years worldwide did not believe this. Now, there were already, you know, things in Rome, they were already brewing, you know, so they, they were already trying to put that together, yes, but it was never made manifest until after. And we are going to go to, to those quotations of the fathers and we're going to see if they're really talking about papal supremacy or a mere primacy of honor.